Hey, it's Rob from Connecticut, all things wood, heat, and maple. Last year, we finished five boils, and I never cleaned our evaporator pan. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get it clean, simple, easy, and inexpensive. Stick around. And this is a flat pan. It's 20 by 48, stainless steel, as you've seen in uh, many of my videos. And this is pretty grody. I left it uncovered. We've got a lot of debris. I'm going to give it a wipe down. We even have a little bit of mildew forming there. That'll be interesting. And then I'm going to show you what we do. All this niter is going to come out, and we'll be ready for the next boil, which is going to be in about uh, three months, maybe two and a half months. So there are a couple things I need to do to get this pan ready. I've got this fitting here where I typically will put our sight glass. You can check out some of those videos about using that and why I think it's a great thing to have. I also have a fitting here where I used to keep a thermometer that I don't use anymore. A little Teflon tape on the threads, tighten her up and she's good to go. One of the things to watch out for, this soot gets everywhere. Gets, once it's on your hands, it's going to be on your face and you're going to look like you've got a mustache and all that. So you got to be really careful. This will stain everything. And a quick turn to dump out all the loose debris. So there we go. The heavy stuff is out. You can see just how tough that is. That's my nail scraping it. And I can just start to get to the base, to that metal. I've got the pan pretty much prepped how I want it before. So I've got three gallons of hot water, the hottest water I can get off the tap in this bucket. And I picked this up on Facebook Marketplace. A guy was selling a bunch of um, brewing equipment and that's how I built my sat preheater. Check out the link right now if you wanna build one of those. But it's great to have at least one bucket that's marked correctly. This way when you're measuring your sap, you know how much you're dealing with, you know how much your boil rate is. So here we go. For what we're doing is we're using white vinegar. This is three gallons, so it's going to be three to one. Three gallons of water to one gallon of white vinegar. We're going to see how that works. If it doesn't work well, you'll know and I'll tell you, and then we'll get a good idea of what exactly we need. Let me see if I can get this open. One thing to note, do not use straight vinegar. And I would be cautious on using really heavy concentrations. You don't want any of those welds to get impacted by the acid. So that's it for step one. I'm going to let this sit overnight, take you guys out here tomorrow when we check it out, and we'll be able to see what's going on with that niter that's in the bottom of the pan. It's the first time I'm testing this ratio. If it works really well, then I could always do a seven gallon batch or an eight gallon. Vinegar is very inexpensive and I could fill it as deep as we want and those sides would get done as well. There'll be a little bit of minor scrubbing, but let's see what this looks like tomorrow. While this pan is sitting overnight with the hot water vinegar mixture in it, I wanted to make sure I had this covered up for two reasons. One, I want to try and keep some of that heat in there. And of course, with all the little cats that we have running around and the birds that fly in and out of the barn, I wanted to make sure nothing fell in there and, and uh, got stuck in the water vinegar mix. What's up, guys? It's the next day. I just got home from work. I just pulled off the wood I had on top of it. I can smell the vinegar, and you can see that that niter is just cracked. But this is what it looks like. That's flaking right off. This is day two of the pan soaking, and here's what it looks like. All of the niter is off the bottom, and that's looking good. So here's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna set this up now on its side so that vinegar water can start working on the edges. So in another couple of days, all four sides will be done. And, and all I'll have to do is give it a really light scrub with a uh, non-abrasive pad. While I was recording this, we had some cold temp, so I had a little ice in there. And now I'm just rinsing it out with hot water, making sure we get all that vinegar smell and flavor out of there. And that should be just about it. Now a really quick wipe down with a dry cloth. And the finished result is a nice shiny pan, probably costing about $2 for the jug of white vinegar, but it was easy. I scrubbed it less than two minutes with that scrubby, rinsed it out. Very easy process. A lot of guys use acid. Some people leave sap in their pan and let it turn to vinegar. 
but I think this is probably the lesser of all the evils. Really great way of doing the pan. Cheap, affordable, just like I like it. Keep it simple, stupid, and get it done. If you do find you have other areas that need to be spruced up, you can use this Barkeeper's Friend. You can pick it up at Walmart or wherever. Non-abrasive, kind of like Bonami. Does a really nice job, except it's kind of tough to rinse out. Leaves a little bit of residue. Hope this helps some of you guys that are sugaring. Let me know in the comments if you've tried it this way. And also look in the description. I've got a couple of bonus items that you can pick up. Help make your sugaring season a little bit easier.